Hey, I'm Melanie Trailer. I have a video today for you where I am I am basically updating an old video. The most popular video on my channel is about the Juki 2000 sewing machine. I get an email every single week about this machine just because it's a popular subject. I'm going to put everything you need to know about this machine within this single video. So we're going to talk we're going to talk a long time. I'm going to show you how to thread the machine, how to use the bobbin, how to how to go about thinking about that bobbin thing. It's a heated topic among us quilters. <laughs> We're going to get to it. Uh, everything about this machine and how to use it, a demo for free motion quilting, a demo for speed control, all of that is in this video. All right, so let's talk about the Juki 2000. This is what I use this machine for. All of my piecing, all of my straight line quilting, and I sew my binding onto the quilt with it. That is all I do. I have a separate machine for free motion quilting. That being said, and that comes into the number one question I get about the Juki 2000, is that can I free motion quilt on it? And yes, you can free motion quilt on this. I have an entire class, my finish it class, where I, I show you exactly that. Free motion quilting on the Juki 2000. But, and, and this is what people always ask me, do I buy the 2000 or do I spend 200 extra dollars and get the 2010? And my answer is, if you're planning on free motion quilting, get the 2010. Because the 2010 has one key feature that the 2000 doesn't and that is speed control. Now I wanna be very, very clear. You can free motion quilt on the 2000. You can just free motion quilt better on the 2010. So yeah, that speed control is very, very helpful for free motion quilting. But if all you're gonna do is what I, what, what I do on it, piece, bind, straight line quilt, the Juki 2000 is good enough for that. It's just a $200 difference, like I mentioned, but that's $200 that we could spend on fabric, right? <laughs> so keep that in mind. If you're going to free motion quilt, Go with the 2010 option. I've had this machine since I wanna say around 2015. I have two of them. I keep two of them so that when I have one go to the shop to get clean, to get service, to get whatever, I have a backup and I don't have to piece on anything else. The Juki 2000 only straight line sews. All right, so if you're looking for a machine that zigzags, that does some kind of decorative stitch, Juki, Juki 2000 is not your machine. What it does, it does really, really well. Those computerized machines drive me crazy. Uh, they're, they have these delays all to them. If I want to uh, backstitch, there's a delay. And it doesn't matter what I, what I wanna do. There's always a delay to a computerized machine. Whereas a manual machine, it's fast, 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 all at my own pace. And, and that's what I love. I don't need anything special. I don't need bells and whistles when it comes to piecing. I just need it to do its job and do its job really, really fast. And the Juki 2000 does that. So let's take a look and I'm gonna hopefully answer a lot of those questions that I forgot to in the previous video. But I kind of wanted to, to just give you an overall look at it first. This is what it looks like. And this is, you know, uh, sitting down onto my table. Uh, if it sits up, it has a tray that is pretty much just as big as what you're seeing here, the clear area, it comes with a tray that is a, almost that size, maybe a little bit bigger actually. And that having a big space is so much better than having a tiny space. So you're not seeing that tray in my video, but it comes with it. And it is amazing if you don't have a table where you can sit your machine down lower. We're gonna kind of go through this machine and I'm gonna show you all the things about it. Another number one question though that I get is about this light. And this light is something that it does not come with the machine. It's not even a Juki brand light. It's a light that I added. And I wanna show you if I turn it off. That is the brightness of the standard Juki. And then I added this light because I felt like, you know, I needed some throat light here. So you turn that on. I'll put a link for the little light. It's very inexpensive. I'll put a link right below this video. But what one of the best things about this machine is the throat space. It is a very, very good size. And then all the components on the machine is metal. So you're not looking at some frenzy plastic machine. You're looking at all metal. This thing is heavy. Uh, this is your stitch length, uh, your needle down, your, you can cut your thread that way. I never use that. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. This is your back stitch. This is your drop the feed dog or have the feed dog up. If I'm going to free motion quilt, I need to drop it. So I would just turn the level there. Can you hear all that metal? And then 
on regular piecing, you know, I use it like that. Here is my tension. It comes with several feet. This, what you're looking at on my machine is the scant quarter inch foot, or you could call it the one fifth inch foot, but it's a scant quarter inch. If I, if I need to scant, I just use the foot as my guide. And if I have to quarter inch foot, there's another foot for that, but I always just use the line on my needle plate. One cool thing is that you can have cones on this machine and you can have one for your bobbin and one for your top thread. That way when you're spinning a new bobbin, I don't have to unthread my machine. Let's talk about my favorite things about this machine. My first favorite thing is this knee lift. And I know that some of you are like, knee lift? Before I had machines that come with knee lifts, I just never used them. But this one, this one is just, it's just absolutely amazing. I don't know why I like it so much, but ever since I got this machine and started using knee lifts, I could never go back to a machine that didn't offer that knee lift. All right, let me show you my favorite, favorite thing about the Juki 2000. And this seems so little. Favorite thing about the machine is that yes, I could use this. I could cut my thread with that, but why would I when it's on my foot pedal? So all I have to do, all right, so let me just, I can sew by pressing forward, right? I can cut my thread by, by pressing with my heel. So toes uh, make the machine sew, heel makes the machine uh, break, cut the thread. I have a, a, a very huge Bernina sewing machine in the next room that I do all my free motion quilting on. It does a beautiful job free motion quilting, but guess what it doesn't have? A thread cutter on the foot pedal. And I can't tell you how frustrated I get over having to go in and cut my thread manually. I know a lot of computerized machines have one of these buttons, but that button has nothing on and I've used a machine that has them. That having to move over here, cut my thread that way, has absolutely nothing on being able to do with the foot pedal. If you have never sewn before, you're like, what is this entitled sewing machine business she's running on about? But if you are sewing a quilt every day, you know, five of seven days a week, which is what I'm doing with my life right now. <laughs> if you are doing that, these tiny, tiny things add up to everything that you require in a sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna do a demo because one of the questions I get a lot is about that speed control. And we kind of touched on that a little bit when it comes to free motion quilting. But let me show you what we're talking about when we're talking about just your basic piecing. All right, so here's the machine going at a slow pace. And I, again, I'm controlling all of this with my foot. My actual foot, not my machine foot. All right, so you can see how slow it can go and then I can make it go a little faster. And this is all again controlled by my foot and then here is its full speed. You really don't need that speed control for piecing because you get enough control with your foot pedal. So again, here's slow and then me speeding it up. I'm actually kind of scared to go full speed because uh, the only time I would ever even use that would be straight line quilting is the only thing I can think of. So it has pretty good control on this and I am, you know, fully capable of sewing different speeds without that extra $200 being spent to get the 2010 model. Okay, so just another demo for a common question I get. Cutting the thread, here's my hands. All right, and then lifting that needle, pulling it out. Uh, one of the questions that I got was how to get used to this. I don't know how you don't use it when you get when when you have it because it, it again it's handy dandy. All right, let's talk about this uh, bobbin. So that was another question. Um, I find this to be a very common design in sewing machines, but another common design was it would it be to be right here and then you slip your bobbin in and it spins this way. But on this machine, the bobbin is up and down. So I kind of want to show you that's you know what it is. And let me get the camera over here so you can see it. It is dirty by the way, but I'm planning a video of me cleaning it. So that's what it looks like down there. And you don't have to move this tray uh, to get it in there. I just pop it right back in. I've had a few people who were used to those top drop-in bobbins say that this was difficult, but I haven't had that to be the case at all. All right, here is a demo for how to thread the Juki 2000. 
first. This is your location for your top thread. This is your location for your bobbin thread. And it doesn't matter if you uh, have a cone or a spool. They both go right there. All right, first, your top thread is gonna go through this little guide right here. And then we're gonna bring it down this little hole, pull it through, then up this little hole. Harder to do it one-handed, right? So just like that. We're gonna come around our little tension guide and there's a little guide right there where it goes through that and then down this guide through this guide up around this lever here back into this one and right down here right into there so you can see that then down to your needle it goes right around there and one thing if you've never sewn on a juki the needle sits with the eye going this way instead of looking at you so you put your thread just like that so just like that and I didn't use this needle threader. You certainly can use it. I'm not using it. It's clumsy and I'm not good at it and I don't use it in my everyday sewing. So uh, you'll have to see another demo to learn how to use that. But that is how to top thread. So just to reiterate that one time, we start here. We're going through this, through, through this eye, down through it and then up through it. So we're coming out right there. We're coming around our tension. We're catching it on this little bar of our tension. It goes around this guide, through this guide, around this lever, back through this guide, through this little guide, this guide, and then through your needle. So there is your threading demo. All right, let's do the bobbin. What's a pro about this machine. You don't have to unthread your top thread to wind your bobbin. So for a bobbin, you're going to take your thread and just like the top thread, it has its own little guide right up here. Going right through that guy. Under This is the top thread hanging right here. It goes, it goes under the top thread and around this little guide right here. Once you get this, you don't have to, until you run out of thread, you don't have to undo it. So I never really mess with this and I don't have to keep doing it like this every time but for your original setup with a spool or a cone of thread you would have to do this after after you do it once though it, it will stay done the entire spool of thread where you don't have to keep doing it I find this to be a little bit clumsy next here is the bobbing has a little tiny hole right there you're going to put your thread right through that hole just like this and this is exactly how I hold it and put it on this little lever standing up. And one thing is sometimes it gets a little hung up and you have to wiggle it. You see how it did that? There it is. And you have to wiggle it to get it to go down. It won't spin at this, this higher place. You have to wiggle it to get it to go down. Once you have it, then you're going to push this lever in, right? And you're going to hit your foot pedal to make it go and it's going and we wait and then that's it it's it's ready to go so you would disengage it to sew again but I just leave it up here until I'm ready for it and then work with the the bobbin that I have in here all right so when this runs out of bobbin I lift up it and grab it out. I'm not actually out of a bobbin right now. But this is how I work this. I'm out of, let's say I'm out of a bobbin. I'm going to take this one off, cut this thread, 
And then I, while I've got the snips in my hand, I go ahead and cut this thread. And then I set this right here, load this bobbin, get it winding. Then I take this one, put it into my bobbin case, and then just plug it right back into my machine. I get everything ready to start sewing again, right? I get my, my needle in the right place, all of that. I get everything ready and in place. By the time I'm usually done with this, the bobbin has finished winding. So I never need to have more than two bobbins, one in my machine and one sitting uh, up top right here. I know some, some quilters will sit and wind, you know, 60 bobbins, and that way they always have one wound. But this is so simple to use. I don't know why you would ever do it that way, or I, w I don't know why you would ever buy those pre-wound bobbins when this two bobbin system works so well. But to each their own. Do it however you please. Uh, let's take a deeper look into this. All right, this is a very, very hard thing to show on a camera, especially since my machine is recessed down into my sewing cabinet. But I want to show you what it looks like down there. And I, I'm going to have a video of me cleaning it. You put it in like this. So let's take a look. Let's take a deeper look at this. Here is what it looks like. I always want to make sure that my bobbin goes into the, the bobbin case with the thread pulled just like this. So not going this way, going this way. All right, so it has to go that way. It goes into the case. You want to hold the case just like this. Everything looks like that. So, you know, obviously not like that. It goes in and you want to be able to see the, this little groove right here when you put it in because your thread is going to go through it and around that little piece of metal. So it's going to catch right on that and if you can do this and it flows down your bobbin tension is accurate all right so let me show you that again i can hold the thread and it slide down like that really really easy bobbin thread going this way holding this to me just like this slipping it in thread goes into this groove and around that little groove comes out at that little eyelet okay when i put it in I hold it just like this. This bar should open up just like this. So it goes in. And you just wiggle it around until you have it right. But shortcut, if it's like this, if it's in this position where this opens out in that direction, that's exactly how it goes into the machine. So I know you can't see me putting it in there. Once you have it in, you know, you just close this. So go in there like this, slip it in, shut the little lever, you're golden. That's all there is to that. I feel like it's one of the easier bobbin situations that I've seen on a machine. Uh, on my uh, Bernina, my, my, my machine that I use for quilting, the, uh, the bobbin thread gets, sometimes it gets caught too far in that little lever and it, it creates tangle issues. So the little, some kind of little design flaw there, but this one, it never moves except for exactly where it's supposed to be. So super easy there. All right, we're gonna talk about feet. And I'm gonna show you what I have and what I bought extra. So you saw the foot that was on my machine. It is a scant quarter inch foot. They call it the one fifth inch, all right? I call it the scant because that's what it is. Here's the walking foot. I only use this during uh, straight line quilting. When I first started quilting, I used it for binding, but then I realized that it's really unnecessary for binding, but it's there if you want to use it for that. I, like I said, I only use it for, for straight, straight line quilting. And what it does is it feeds your quilt through evenly so that you don't get tiny little folds when you're quilting. It's not 100% effective, but it's pretty darn effective, if I'm being honest. And this walking foot came with my machine. I actually have two of them because I have two uh, jukies. <laughs> this is a free motion foot, sometimes called a darning foot. It does not come with 
the Juki machine or it didn't come with mine. Now, when you're buying your Juki, sometimes they have little specials and little packages where you get extra stuff. I'll take advantage of those extra feet. Uh, but if you're buying the basic one on Amazon, it doesn't come with any bells or whistles. So this would be an extra foot that you would need to free motion quilt. I also have this. This was also bought extra. This is a ruler foot. This is so I could free motion with a ruler. And the rule, the difference is, is that it's got a thick edge right here. This little piece right there. It's a lot thicker than say this one so that your ruler won't get up under your foot and you won't sew on top of your ruler and break your machine. Handy dandy. You think this is unnecessary, but it is necessary if you are quilting with rulers. All right. Uh, but this one is, this one will get you started. All right. This one, I don't know if it has a special name, but it is a quarter inch foot. So I could use it for that. I think it actually has some other purposes that I'm unaware of though. I have never used this foot. All right, this right here is also extra. It is a guide for straight line quilting. Um, I use this every time I straight line quilt and I love it. It attaches itself like this. In my finish it class, I go into great detail about this piece. I think I also have a free video on YouTube where I talk about how to put this on. So if you're interested in that, I will link to it right below this video. But it basically works like that. You know how you'll use those lines on your needle plate to keep the edge of your fabric on a quarter inch seam, say? You would use this kind of the same way. You can unscrew this, move this, and it would, it would be your guide to sewing evenly spaced lines. It is incredibly helpful. So I definitely recommend this if you like to straight line quilt. That's all I, ha I have extra for the, um, as far as feet go. But Juki has so many feet that you could buy or get. Just kind of depends on what you work on for what you need. So this, all, this that I've shown you, what, the, what it came with, those two feet that it came with, that's all I really need. So uh, let me show you needles. So these are the needles that I use uh, for this machine, and I usually use the 80. I have uh, these in the shop, so I always use the top stitch needles. And here's that tape that you saw on my machine. So I'll have to go and put another thing of tape now that I've cleaned it. So I usually change the tape every time I clean my machine. All right, let's clean this machine out. So I just pop up my, my little um, uh, plexiglass here. Now, if, you, if you're on a tray, if, you, if you're using that tray, you would take that off too. All right, so we're just going to remove that to the side. And I'm going to go ahead, take my bobbin back out, and just put all of that to the side. Your machine comes with this. I'm just going to unscrew this. And there's one back here. I'll unscrew as well. All right, now if you use diagonal seam tape or any kind of washi tape to guide you as you sew, obviously that's gonna have to come up. So let's go ahead and pull that up. And this comes off. This is your needle plate and your bobbin case door. And most machines come with this little guy. When I inherited my grandmother's sewing stuff, I got this one from her. So I really like this. All right, so just tidy that up. Put that to the side. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna start dusting all of this buildup. I wanna say it's probably been two to three months since I did any kind of cleaning on this machine. And I'm gonna take my uh, screw, I'm gonna go ahead and take this foot off so I can see everything better, right? I'll leave that screw in there and there's the foot. And this way I can really see into this. Now, this is one thing that my, my, little, my little brush is handy for is getting that build up that gets into the, to your, your teeth right there. Move all that to the side. Tidy up, tidy up, tidy up. All right, and I am going to I'm going to take my, uh, you can't see me, but I'm taking my knee lift out of the machine so I can move it a little bit better. I'm also going to turn the machine off and I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to leave the plug on the light on though. All right. 
and I want to just kind of pick this up. All right, so I'm just going to kind of grab all of this. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use that blow spray. They say it's damaging to the machines. Every time I take mine in to get service, the repair guy says, don't use blow spray. I'm like, I haven't. So I'm just going to brush, brush, brush and get this out. Um, I normally kind of use a hand back a little bit too, but I'm not going to get that out because it's really loud. So I'm just going to do it by hand, but I do like, I have a, uh, a an attachment to my vacuum where it has a little needle nose and I use that a lot. So hand vacs are really, really handy for this job. All right, that's pretty tidy. One more thing. I'm going to turn my machine to its side. And I'm going to slide it up here like that. All right, so it's just turned on its side. This machine has this handy feature right here where I can do a little bit of extra cleaning. Not all machines have this, but the Juki does. And then I can also get down here and get some of those harder to reach places. It's really oily down here. <laughs> Uh, so some of it is getting a little clumpy. All right, I've just got some tissues. I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to just wipe everything down a little bit. Get some of those harder to reach dusty places. All right, that looks pretty good down there. I'm just going to wipe up this area right here. And wipe up this a little bit extra. Like I said, don't do this that much. Uh, maybe every three months. I think it's been probably three months since I've done it. All right, and then this slides right back on. Easy peasy. This is a really heavy machine. All right, I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit more about to have a dust-free area. All right, needle plate. I'm going to put it back on. There's a screw here and one more screw right there. Let's tighten those up. The foot goes, I got to unscrew this just enough to get this foot back into, you know, just like that. I want to push up the foot as far as it will go. Also bring it as close to that bar as far as it'll go and then tighten this and then tighten it a little bit more with the screwdriver. Let me go ahead and put my bobbin back in and we'll put the plexiglass back in place. And you can see that um, I've got machine, my machine in the wrong place. So I'm just going to slide my machine that way. That's back in place and we're all tidied up. Let's talk about oiling this machine. All right, so my machine came with this little bottle. It's got a little bit of oil in it, but I think I've pretty much used all of that one. I have an older bottle of all purpose that I just picked up at the craft store. This is probably going on 16 years of this oil. I actually oil pretty often, but you just don't go through that much of it. But this is what come with my Juki. All right, so to use, just open up whatever oil you find. Whatever oil you find is good enough. And the Juki has these little holes. It has a couple holes here, it has a couple holes up here. I'm going to show you those, but let's start with these. I just put one or two drops into the machine. Just like that and there's a there's a hole right here so one or two drops in it and then right right here is another one right over here by the bobbin case there are one two and three so all right and that that's all there is to oiling 
uh, links to everything, the machine, the light, the, all of that stuff, I'm going to put right below this video. So if you have any other concerns, questions, anything, please reach out. You can leave a comment or you can send me an email or reach out on Instagram. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, and talk sewing machines with you. Uh, I know exactly <laughs> what it's like to buy the wrong machine for you. So, you know, it's a very, very big decision and you want to think about all the things. You want to think about how you're going to be using this machine. So all of that decides which machine to buy. So uh, yeah, reach out if you need um, further help. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.